Welcome to our second lecture where we'll be discussing basic genetics. In that, we'll be looking at the Mendel's law of independent segregation and random assortment and describe and explain it. We'll be doing some correlation to determine concepts of dominant and recessive with uh, traits and example of blood group antigen. We'll be explaining the Hardy Weinberg principle and how it applies to genetic traits. It will be given the necessary information to solve the Hardy Weinberg problems for all the blood group antigens. And these principles can be used as needed in other applications. We'll be determining the inheritance pattern of a given trait by examining the pedagogy. We'll examine mitosis, meiosis, and outline the differences between them, distinguish between the X-linked and autosomal traits, and describe how each is inherited. We'll be listing various types of genetic mutation and describe how they can change the function of living cells and organisms. We'll be describing different uh, genetic mechanisms for the correction of mutation, which means we'll be going into the whole process of replication, transcription, translation, including the basic uh, mechanisms of each. We will be identifying some of the ways in which uh, genetics can be used in uh, transfusion laboratory medicine, including the necessary background information for describing the genetic techniques. And that will conclude in essence what we'll be seeking to cover in this session here on the Professor Kareem Ainsley Encounter. In this space, we speak about all things concerning medical laboratory science, clinical laboratory science, and laboratory medicine. In preparation for the ASCP examination, if this is something that you're interested in, please meet us on the inside where the story continues. Now that we're on the inside, for those who want to navigate to select areas of the discourse, please uh, use the description below with the content markers and uh, our resources will also be listed in the description below for your perusal. We know that one of the most important areas in modern biology is actually the science of genetics, uh, the study of heredity. And this is paramount in understanding, comprehending the inheritance of blood group antigens and the testing for disease markers at the molecular level, both of which are vital in transfusion medicine, are based on the science of genetics. The fundamental principles of classical genetics will facilitate understanding of the molecular basis of individual's blood group. Knowing of the current methods of analysis is also required to appreciate how problems in genetics are solved and explained. This will help us in ascertaining information concerning inheritance differences affecting red cell antigen, among other situations which will form the basis of a safe blood transfusion. A solid understanding of classic genetics includes Mendel's law of inheritance and the Hardy-Weinberg formula. Most of the antigens in the various blood group system generally follows a straightforward inheritance pattern. Those uh, blood group antigens we speak about such as ABO, RH, KEL, KID usually a co-dominant nature is observed. It is modern genetics that plays an integral role in analyzing the antigen profile of blood donors and recipients, which was previously performed only by serologic testing. Transfusion medicine professionals need to understand the classic genetics such as interpretation of a familial inheritance pattern, as well as the concept behind molecular method such as restriction mapping, sequencing, polymerase chain reaction PCR, and gene array technology, among others. Let us now examine the classic genetics. Modern genetics is based upon understanding the biochemical and the biophysical nature of the nucleic acid, including the deoxyribonucleic acid, which we refer to as DNA. 
and the ribonucleic acid, which we refer to as the RNA. And the various proteins that are a part of the chromosomal architecture. Genetics is also concerned with uh, population studies and epidemiology. All types of transfusion medicine are influenced by genetics, including HLA typing, relationship testing, and the prediction of uh, the phenotype of red cells, platelets, and neutrophil antigen. The antigens are present on all blood cells are expressed as a phenotype, but it is the genotype of the organism that controls which antigen may be expressed on the cell. Although many genetic mechanisms can generate various blood group antigen, the majority are the result of a change of one nucleotide referred to as a single nucleotide polymorphism, SNP. For example, genotyping the donor or recipient DNA extracted from leukocytes can predict which antigen may be expressed on the red blood cell. The predicted phenotype for a recipient obtained by a genotype can give valuable insights on the potential antibodies that can be produced, especially if the recipient's red cells cannot be typed by serological methods due to recent transfusion. Understanding this, it gives us uh, the importance of uh, genetics in modern blood banking techniques. As we move into population genetics, we will realize that majority of the concern as it relates to blood banking includes the Mendel's Law of Inheritance, the Hardy-Weinburn Principle, and the Inheritance Pattern. Let us give some history on these systems. There was a Swedish biologist called Carlos Linnaeus. He started the first classification system of living things in the 17th century and used uh, the units of uh, species as its uh, principal definition. It was then in 1859 that uh, Charles Darwin published his epic book on the origin of a species. After many years of intense studies of various and diverse life forms, and we all have a conceptual understanding that the book was written with some bases which are still to this day unfounded, Darwin's ambition was to understand the diversity of life and how one organism could gain an advantage over another and a better survival in a given environment, which is referred to most commonly as a natural selection. We need to bring to your attention that Darwin believed in eugenics, believing that some persons were more important than others, hence the real reason for his study was to determine who should live and who should die. This was in the same period they were trying to justify enslaving people. It was in 1865 that the science of genetics for the modern work was found by Gregor Mendel. Mendel was an Austrian monk and a mathematician who used the sweet pea plant growing in the monastery garden to study the physical traits in organisms and how they are inherited. From his observation, he determined that the physical traits are due to the factor called elementen within the cell. In modern genetics, we know the physical basis these so-called elementens are actually genes within the nucleus of the cell. Mendel studied the inheritance of several readily observable pea plant characteristics, notably flowering colored, seed color, and seed shape. He based his first law of inheritance, the law of independence and random segregation, on these results. Now let us move into the first generation in the study called the parental or the pure, or others refer to it as the P1 generation. 
consisting of all reds or all white uh, flowers that bred true for many generations. So these uh, plants only replicated and generated their specific colors. So they were purebred. These plants were either homozygous RR, a dominant trait. Dominant traits are usually written in the uppercase. Let us remember that. Or they were homozygous white flowers, which were RR, which are recessive traits. So recessive traits are written in the lowercase. So the red was uh, capital RR and the white flowers were uh, lowercase RR. When these plants were crossbred, the second generation called the first uh, philia or the F1 had flowers that were all red. Thus, the dominant trait was the only trait observed. So after observing this, when the plants of the F1 generation were crossbred to each other, the second filial or the F2 generation of the plant had flowers that were red and white. However, there was noted a ratio of 3 to 1. All the plants from the F1 generation are heterozygotes or hybrids. For flower color R, R, so that is capital R and lowercase r. The F2 generation had a ratio of three red flowered plants to one white flowered plant. This is because the plants that have the R genes, either RR homozygous or RR heterozygous, which is uppercase R and lowercase R for the heterozygous, will have red flowers because the red genes is a dominant. Only when the red genes is absent and the white genes occurs in duplicate, as in the RR homozygous, the white plant occurs. It is only in this case that the recessive white genes expression will be visible as a phenotype. So we have the genotype and we have the phenotype. So the genotypic relationship and the phenotypic relationship sometimes are in unison. Other times we have to realize that the genes determine the phenotype. And it is the genotype which determine what is expressed in the phenotype. So the genotype is the more important area of examination. But the phenotype gives us an idea as to what the genotype is about. This situation illustrated Mendel's first law, the law of independent segregation. Specifically, Mendel's first law showed that the alleys of a gene have no permanent effect on one another when present in the same plant, but segregate unchanged by passing into different gametes. Each gene is passed on to the next generation on its own. So now we're understanding that uh, in this uh, simplified experiment, it gave us a revelation as to genes being transferred from parent to daughter cell. But we should be mindful that an intermediate situation can also occur when the alley exhibits partial dominance. This is observed when the phenotype of a heterozygous organism is mixed of both homozygous phenotype seen in the, in the P1 generation. An example of this plant with red and white flowers that have offspring with pink flowers or flowers that have red and white uh, section. It is important to remember that although the phenotype does not show dominance or recessive trait, the F1 generation has the heterozygous uh, genotype of R, capital R, and R, lowercase r. It is essential to understand how a genotype can influence a phenotype. 
and using uh, flower color is a good basic model to study this phenomena. So now we're going to bring this home. We're going to take it from the plant world into the real human world. So unlike uh, flower colors of many types of plant, most blood group uh, genes are inherited in a codominant manner. In codominance, both alleles are expressed and their gene produced are seen at the phenotypic level. Now, let us move into Mendel's second law, which is the law of independent assortment and state that the gene for different traits are inherited separately from each other. This allows for all possible combination of a gene to occur in the offspring. Let us imagine this. If a homozygote that is dominant for two different characteristics is crossed with a homozygote that is recessive for both characteristics, the F1 generation consists of plants whose phenotype is the same as that of the dominant parent. However, when the F1 generation is crossed in the F2 generation, two general classes of offsprings are found. One is the parental type, the other is the new phenotype called the reciprocal type and represents plants which the dominant features of one plant and the recessive feature of another plant. Recombinant types occur in both possibilities. This phenomenon is expanding in Mendel's second law. Mendel's law applies to all sexually reproducing diploid organisms, whether they are microorganisms, insects, plants, or animals, not to mention people. However, there are exceptions to the Mendelian law of inheritance. If the gene for separate traits are closely linked on the chromosome, they can be inherited as a single unit. Yes, a single unit. What we need to understand is that the expected ratio of progeny in the F1 mating that may not be seen is various traits being studied are actually linked. There can also be difference in the gene ratio of the progenies of the F1 mating. If recombination has occurred during the process of meiosis, an example of this uh, in blood banking is the MNS system, in which the MN alleles and the S, capital S, and lowercase s alleles are physically close on the same chromosome and are therefore linked. Closely linked genes are inherited as a haplotype and the antigens encoded by the haplotype have a different prevalence than if they were randomly assorted. Recombination happens when the DNA strands are broken and there is an exchange of the chromosomal material followed by activation of the DNA repair mechanism. The exchange of the chromosomal material results in a new hybrid genotype that may or may not be visible at the phenotypic level. So even though someone may have a particular trait, it may not necessarily be seen on the physical level. However, genotypically this trait exists and it will only be revealed as the lineage continues. Yes, let us now examine the Hardy-Weinberg principle. Hardy, a British uh, mathematician, and Weinberg was a German physician. They developed a mathematical formula that allowed the study of the Mendelian inheritance in great details. The Hardy-Weinberg formula is P plus Q equal 1, in which P equal the gene frequency of the dominant alley and Q 
is the frequency of the recessive alley which can also be represented as p square plus 2pq plus q square equal 1. This is where our rudimentary algebraic maths come back into the forefront of our mind. This uh, formula basically addresses uh, the question about recessive traits and how they can be persistent in a population. To determine the frequency of each alley, we count the number of individuals who have the corresponding phenotype. Remembering that both D, capital D, and uh, lowercase d, common D, and uh, capital D and capital D will appear as D positive. This value is represented by P in the Hardy-Weinberg equation. Counting the alleys let us determine the value of Q by counting alleys, bearing in mind that when P and Q are added, they must equal 1 because it's one individual. The ratio of homozygotes and heterozygotes is determined by solving the equation P plus Q equal 1 or P square plus 2pu plus q square equals 1. For example, if you consider testing 1000 people at random for the blood donor antigen D and you found that uh, capital D and capital D plus capital D and common D both uh, resulted in a D positive phenotype occurring in 84% of the population and DD, lowercase d, lowercase d, RH negative, occurs in 16%. The gene frequency calculation would be performed as followed. E equal gene frequency of uh, uppercase D, Q equal gene frequency of the lowercase d. Therefore, P square would equal to uppercase d, uppercase d, while 2pq equal uppercase d, lowercase d, which combines are 0.84. Then we're going to move on to q square equal lowercase d, lowercase d, which uh, is 0.16. The q equal the root of 0.16, which is 0. 0.4. Therefore, P plus Q equal 1, the equation. So, P equal 1 minus Q and P equal 1 minus 0 0.4, which we have determined because Q is 0 0.4. Therefore, P would equal to 0 0.6. If everything is just plugged into the equation, it gives us the answer in real time. More complex uh, equation use... Uh, the expansion of the binomial equation p equal q plus r equal 1 or p square plus 2pq plus 2pr plus uh, q square plus 2qr plus r square equal 1. So in more complex uh, genetic uh, operation, uh, this formula may be utilized. Quick point to note, uh, criteria for using uh, the Hardy-Weinberg formula. The population study must be large, matching among all individuals must be uh, random, mutation must not occur in the parent or the offspring, there must be no migration, differential fertility or mortality of uh, genotype studies. These are just some criteria when utilizing the Hardy-Weinberg formula. Now let us look at inheritance pattern. The interpretation of uh, pedigree analysis requires the understanding of uh, various uh, conventions in the representation of uh, data figures. Males are always represented by squares and females by circle, with open symbols indicating an unaffected individual, but when there is a close uh, filled uh, symbol, it indicates that uh, there is an affected individual. A line joining a male and a female indicates a mating between two and the offspring are indicated 
by a vertical line. A double line between a male and a female indicate a consanguous mating. A stillbirth or abortion is indicated by a small black circle. Deceased family members have a line crossed through the symbol representing them. The propositus or proban in the pedigree is indicated by an arrow pointing to it and indicates the most interesting or important members of the pedigree. Autosomal recessive inheritance can be displayed by a pedigree diagram. Autosomal refers to traits that are not carried on the sex chromosome. Sex-linked traits are encoded by the gene generally located on the X chromosome as a few functional genes are present on the Y chromosome. A recessive trait is carried by either the parent or both parents but is not generally seen at the phenotypic level unless both parents carry the trait. In some cases, a heterozygous individual inherits the gene from a recessive trait but the trait may not be seen at the phenotypic level. With autosomal recessive inheritance, the trait is expressed only when an individual is homozygous for the alley and inherits the alley from both parents. For example, the offspring of two parents with LUB and LUB gene will have a 1 in 4 chance of uh, inheriting two recessive LU genes, which results in a LU bracket A minus B minus close bracket red cell type. X-link inheritance can also be displayed by the pedigree chart. If a father carries the trait on the X chromosome, he has no sons with the trait because all his daughters will have the trait. This is because a father always passes his Y chromosome to his son and his X chromosome to his daughters. Women can either be homozygous or heterozygous for an X-linked trait. Therefore, when mothers have an X trait, X link trait, their daughters inherit the trait in a manner identical to autosomal inheritance. The son, on the other hand, has a 50% chance of inheriting the trait. Because the trait is dominant, the son who inherits it will express it. Take, for instance, XGA blood group system is one of the few blood group system that follows the X-link inheritance. We also have X-linked recessive inheritance. In this case, the father always expresses the trait but never passes it on to his son. The affected father always passes the trait to all his daughters who are then carriers of the trait. The female carriers will pass a trait onto half of their sons who also will be carriers. In the homozygous state XY, the male will express the trait whereas only the rare homozygous female XX will express it. In this situation, with an X-link recessive trait, uh, disease-carrying genes can pass from generation to generation with many individuals not affected. A classical example of this uh, inheritance is Haemophilia A, which affected many of the royal house of Europe. Another example of uh, the X-link recessive inheritance for blood group system is the XK genes. Mutation in this genes result in red blood cell with uh, McLeod's phenotype and reduce expression of Kell system antigen. Autosomal dominant traits are routinely encountered in the blood banking system as most blood groups genes are co-dominant and are on the autosomal chromosome. Let us explain why it may appear as though recessive trait may seem to skip generation. 
there are many autosomal dominant inheritance in which all the members of the family who carry the ali shows the physical characteristics. Generally, each individual with the trait has at least one parent with the trait and the gene is expressed whether the individual is homozygous or heterozygous for the ali. Unlike the X-linked trait, autosomal traits usually do not show a difference in the distribution between male and female. And this can be useful in their evaluation. Also, in autosomal and X-linked traits, if an individual does not have the trait, he or she can be a carrier and can pass it on to the offspring. So this is what uh, gives us the idea that maybe a trait is a recessive trait skips a generation. Not that it is not there, but because it is passed on without impacting the one who has it because they are a carrier. Now, let us look at cellular genetics. Organisms may be divided into two major categories, prokaryotic without a defined uh, nucleus and eukaryotic with a defined nucleus. Human beings and all other mammals are included in the eukaryotic group as are birds, reptile, amphibian, fish, and some fungal species. The nucleus material is organized into chromatin, consisting of the nucleic acid and the structural protein, and is defined by staining patterns. We have uh, heterochromatin stain as uh, dark bands and achromatin stain as light uh, bands and consists uh, of highly condensed uh, region that are usually not uh, transcriptionally active. Euchromatin is the solen form of uh, chromatin in the cell, which is considered to be more active in the synthesis of RNA for transcription. So most cellular nucleus contains these different types of chromatin. The chromatin material itself, which chiefly comprises long polymerase of DNA and various basic protein called histone, is comprised of coils that form chromosomes during the cell division. Each organism has a different number of uh, chromosomes, some as few as 4 and some as many as 50. In humans, which we are concerned with, they have 46 uh, chromosomes in uh, diploid uh, cells. These 46 chromosomes are arranged into pairs, with one of each being inherited from either parents, the mother and the father. Humans have 22 autosomes and one set of uh, sex uh, chromosomes XX in the female and XY in the male. A uh, genome is the full complement of genes in the organism. The chromosomes are the structure in the cell nucleus uh, that contain the duplex, the double strands, uh, the DNA. A gene is a section often very large of DNA along with some chromosome that encodes for particular protein. The specific location on the gene on a chromosome is called the locus or loci for plural. And at each loci, there may be only one or several alternative forms of the gene, which are called the alleys. And when we take it back into the blood group system, we have kid blood group system. The alley JKA and JKB encodes the JKA and JKB antigen respectively. JKA and JKB are considered antithetical antigen. When alleys are carried on the same chromosome, they are in the cis position and alleys found on opposite chromosome of a homologous pair are in the trans position. This is why it's so important to be able to distinguish between the phenotype and the genotype. The genotype is a complement of the DNA that is inherited. The phenotype is observable expression of the genotype 
including the enzymes to control a blood group antigen. As we reflect uh, back on our previous uh, knowledge, a gene may be inherited but the gene products not express due to a mutation that silenced the gene resulting in a phenotype that differs from the genotype. More than one gene can affect a particular trait such as the height of an individual. All relative genes can be considered as a part of a genotype for a trait. The inheritance of different alleles from each parent results into a heterozygous genotype. Hemizygous refers to the condition when one chromosome has a copy of a gene and the other chromosome has the gene deleted or absent. Another important concept uh, is that uh, the silent gene or the amorpho, an amorpho is a gene that does not produce any obvious, uh, easily detectable trait and is seen only at the phenotypic level when the individual is homozygous for the trait. Let us discuss mitosis. During the cell division, the chromosomes are reproduced in such a way that all daughter cells are genetically identical to the parent cell. Without maintaining the same number and type of chromosomes, the daughter cells would not be viable. The process by which uh, the somatic cells divide to create identical daughter cells is called mitosis. So when there is identical cells being created, that should bring our mind to the concept of mitosis. The chromosomes are duplicated and one of each pair is passed to the daughter cell during the process of mitosis. Qualitatively and quantitatively, identical DNA is delivered to the daughter cell formed by cell division. And it goes through quite a few stages or phases. We have the interphase, the prophase, the metaphase, the anaphase, the telophase, each serving their distinct function. Interphase. Resting stage between cell division. During this period, cells are synthesizing RNA and protein. And uh, in this stage, the chromatin is uncondensed. Then we move into prophase 4N. Prophase, first stage of meiotic cell division. Chromosomes become visible and condensed. Each chromosome has two chromatid from duplication of DNA. And chromatins are linked by the centromeres. Then we move into stage 3, the metaphase for N. Chromosomes move towards the equator of the cells and are held in place by the microchondrial attached at the mitotic spindle apparatus. Then after metaphase, we move into anaphase for N, where we have two sister chromatins separate. Each one migrates to the opposite pole of the cell and the diameters of the cell decreases at the equator. Then we move into stage 5, telophase, and this is a 2 end. Chromatins are at the pole of each cell and the cell membranes divide between the two nuclei. The cells divide and each cell contains a pair of chromosomes identical to the parent cell. This is just one cycle in the cell division and this process continues for multiple cycles. Now let us look at uh, meiosis. Meiosis is a different process. It is used to produce gametes or the sex cells. This process is called meiosis and results in four uniques rather than two identical daughter cells. The uniqueness of the daughter cells generated when meiosis allows for great genetic diversity in the organism and control the number of chromosomes within a dividing cells. If cells with 2N chromosomes were paired, the resulting daughter cells would have 4N chromosomes, which would not be viable. Therefore, gametes carrying haploid number of chromosomes, 1N, 
so that when they combine, the resulting cell will have a 2N configuration. When we think of sex cells or the gametes, we should think automatically of meiosis. Meiosis has its own replication sequence and the first stage is the interphase. Same, the resting stage between cell division during this period, the cells are synthesizing RNA and protein and the chromatin is uncondensed, the same as in mitosis. Then we have the prophase 1, 4N, uh, the first stage in the meiotic cell division, uh, chromosome condensed, uh, homologous chromosome pair to become bivalent, chromosome crossover occur at this stage. Then we move into the metaphase 1, 4N, the bivalent chromosomes align at the center equator. The bivalent chromosome contain all four of the cell's copy of each chromosome. Then we move into the anaphase 1, 4N, then we have homologous pairs move to the opposite poles of the cell, the two sister chromatins separate. Then we have telophase 1, which we have the cells separate to become two daughter cells. The new cells are now 2N. So up to this point, it's basically the same set of cell division that is taking place in the mitosis. However, it has stages 6, which has a metaphase in which the homologous line at the equator. Then the anaphase 2, we have the homologous moving to the opposite pole of the cell's equator. And then telophase 2, N, we have uh, equal cells uh, separates into two new cells. There are two, there are now four N cells with a unique uh, genetic uh, constitution. All the cells that are generated in this uh, division are unique. Now, let us examine some molecular genetic uh, concepts. Uh, let us move first into deoxyribonucleic acid. As we mentioned before, that is DNA. And the DNA is the masterpiece of the architectural uh, backbone of hereditary. Chromatin is actually a type of polymer structure. Chromosomes are composed of long linear strands of DNA tightly coiled around a highly basic protein called histones. Each chromosome is a single extremely long strand of duplex DNA. DNA is a nucleic acid, therefore most proteins that uh, interact with it has uh, all overall basic pH. This helps uh, to stabilize the overall complex structure. The complex of the DNA and histone protein is referred to as a nucleosome. The DNA and the protein complex is bounded together so tightly and efficiently that extremely long stretches of DNA, several inches in length, can be packaged inside the nucleus of a cell on a microscopic level. The DNA and the histones are held together by various proteins that keep the DNA in a very specific helical configuration. This conformation also protects the DNA from uh, degradation when it is not being replicated or transcribed. So as we examine human beings, all DNA in human cell is in the form of a two-stranded uh, duplex with one strand in uh, one direction and the other strand in the opposite direction. These strands are said to be antiparallel. The formation of hydrogen bonds between two complementary strands of DNA is called hybridization. DNA is composed of four nitrogenous base, the five carbon sugar molecules called the deoxyribose and the phosphate group. The sugars and the phosphate uh, meiotic comprise the backbone of the DNA molecules while the nitrogenous base uh, faces each other and are stabilized by hydrogen bond and the van der Waal forces. The backbone of a DNA molecule is joined by phosphodiesters linkage. Unlike uh, what is observed in protein with an alpha helical structure, there is little bonding force between bases on the same strand which allow DNA 
to be strong but also flexible. The four different nitrogenous bases are adenine A, cytosine C, guanine G, and thiamine T. Adenine and guanine are purine, consisting of a double ringed structure. Cytosine and thiamine are pyrimidines, which are single ring structure. The hydrogen bond in the DNA is a specific in which A bonds only to T with a two hydrogen bond, thus forming a weaker pair, and C bonds only with G with a three hydrogen bond, forming a stronger pair. This is the classic Waston Crick base pairing that occurs in the B form right handed helical structure of DNA. The phosphate in the DNA backbone attaches to the sugar at the third and fifth carbon atom. Note that all atoms in a molecular structure are numbered. The linkage of the purine and the pyrimidines nitrogenous bases to the sugar is at the carbon 1. Therefore, the two DNA strands are antiparallel. This is one strand is in the 5 to 3 prime and the other strand is in uh, the opposite uh, direction, 3 to 5 prime. Though there are only four different bases used uh, to make up the DNA template and there are 20 different amino acids that are used to construct the protein, it is evident that any single nucleotide cannot code for a specific uh, amino acid. What has been discovered is that uh, triplets of nucleotide called codons such as ATG codes for one such specific amino acid. There are four spatial codons including the only codon specific for the initiation of transcription translation called the start codon and the three different codons that are used to stop the addition of amino acid in the process of peptide synthesis. Because these codons cannot be changed with an amino acid, they are called stop codons and result in the termination of the peptide being translated from mRNA. DNA has to be replicated, which is basically the process of copying a DNA. So we have a stage in which we have the nucleotides added continuously to the tree prime N, and we have the parental DNA, then we have the single-stranded, and then we have the last fragment, and uh, finally we have the previous uh, fragment and that there is a, a brief overview of the DNA and the DNA when it is transcribed it can also replicate after replication the DNA can also be repaired there is a proofreading occur in both the 5 to 3 prime and the 3 to 5 prime direction and allow the polymerase to backtrack on the recently copied DNA strand and remove any incorrect nucleotide insert the correct one in its place, in addition to the proofreading ability of DNA polymerase enzyme, there is a second type of uh, editing called a mismatch repair, where an incorrect non-complementary nucleotide is removed and the correct one is inserted in its place. DNA may need to be repaired because of uh, photoreactivity, excision repair, recombinant repair, mismatch repair, SOS repair. Different chemicals uh, or mutagens uh, can cause uh, a need for a DNA to be repaired. I just want to bring your attention to the generative uh, cell cycle. Stages G0, G1, S, G2, and M. So the description for the G0 or the gap 0 is a temporary resting period where there's no cell division and the configuration is 2N. Then we have G1, gap 1, which is a cell produced RNA and synthesized protein and this is also a 2N configuration. Then we move into the synthesis which is S and the DNA replication occurs in this phase which is 4N and then after the synthesis we move to gap 2 that's G2, where during the, the gap uh, between DNA synthesis and uh, mitosis, uh, the cell uh, continues to synthesize RNA and produce new protein. The configuration is a 4N. 
and mitosis, which is M, is a cell division that occurs in this phase, and this is in a 2N configuration. Let's talk about it. DNA replication. The replication or copying of a DNA is a complex process involving numerous enzyme nucleic acid primers, various small molecules, and a DNA helix molecule that serves as its own template for the replication process. DNA must be copied before mitosis can occur and must be copied in such a way that each daughter cell will have the same amount of DNA and in the same sequence. Nearly all DNA replication is done in a bidirectional manner and is semi-conservative in nature. As enzymes involved in the replication process opens the double-stranded DNA helix, one strand of DNA is copied in the 5 to 3 prime manner while the other strand is opened partially in the section and is copied 5 to 3 prime in section as the double stranded template continuously opens. Each strand of the parent DNA serves as a template for the newly synthesized strand, thereby maintaining the order of nucleotides. So what happens is that DNA to be replicated with the exact copies of the template is a sequence into new double-stranded helix. Many enzymes and proteins are involved in this process. DNA replication occur in specific steps facilitated by certain enzymes and other molecules at uh, each step. First section, DNA must be uncoiled from its uh, supercoiled uh, phase or the double twist nature and uh, two strands must be separated and uh, kept apart. This is done by an enzyme DNA gyrase which opens the supercoils and the DNA helicase separates the two strands of the duplex DNA. These enzymes use energy derived from ATP hydrolysis, opens the DNA molecules and keep the strands separate. In the next step, the DNA polymerase 3 can synthesize a new strand in the 5 to 3 prime direction on the leading strand. Proteins called single-stranded binding proteins interact with the open strand of a DNA to prevent hydrogen bonding when it is not needed during the replication. DNA polymerase 3 also proofreads the addition of new bases to the growing DNA strand and can remove an incorrectly incorporated base such as G paired to T. In order for the replication to take place on a piece of DNA, there must first be a short oligonucleotide composed of RNA that binds to the beginning of the region to be replicated. This then primes the replication process. Therefore, these short oligonucleotides sequence are called primers. Both DNA parent strands are replicated simultaneously in the 5 to 3 prime manner. However, the mechanics is a little bit different. Replication of the other parent strand, the lagging strand, is more complicated because the strands are antiparallel. As the helix is open, RNA primers sequences are added to the area of the open fork and the RNA primers are extended into the 5 to 3 prime manner until the polymerase reach the previously synthesized end. Rather than being replicated in a continuous manner, these replication forks open up all along the lagging strand and are extended in this way. The small region of newly replicated DNA are known as Okazaki fragments. So these fragments must be joined together to make a complete and continuous strand. This is accomplished by the two enzyme DNA polymerase 
1 and DNA ligase. The RNA primers are synthesized and added to the DNA strands by an enzyme called primase, which anneals to the parent strand. After replication of the leading and lagging strand is complete, DNA ligase joins the phosphodiester bonds of the DNA backbone to complete the intact molecules. Then we have the isomers enzyme that recoils the DNA. Once this is completed and the DNA is proofread by proofreading enzyme, the cells can continue with mitosis and cell division. Now, sometimes when we have DNAs, they need to be repaired. So DNA must be copied exactly or information it contains will be altered, possibly resulting in a disease in the organism, viability. However, mistakes in the complex process of replication does occur. And when this occur, there is an effective and efficient mechanism that is designed to identify these errors or change that which is in error and correct so that the sequence can be in accordance to that which should have been copied. The proofreading occurs in both the 5 to 3 prime and the 3 to 5 prime direction and allows the polymerase to backtrack on a recently copied DNA strand and remove an incorrect nucleotide, inserting the correct one in its place. In addition to the proofreading ability of the DNA polymerase enzyme, there is a second type of editing called the mismatch repair, where an incorrect non-complementary nucleotide is removed and the correct one is inserted in its place. Many different chemicals and environmental factors can alter DNA by modifying its chemical or uh, physical structure. These include alkaline agents which react with guanine and result in depurination. Some cancer treatments are often based on the principle that the faster replicating DNA is cancer cells does greater damage and put cancer cells at a greater risk for cell death than a normal cell. Ionizing radiations and strong oxidants such as peroxide can cause a single strand break. UV radiation can alter timing base resulting in timing dimers. Certain drugs such as the antibiotic mitocin C can form covalent linkage between base on opposite strand resulting in an incorrect separation of the strand at uh, the site during replication and subsequent mutation in the daughter strand. Nearly all defects in the DNA replication can be corrected by various mechanisms used by the cell to maintain DNA integrity. However, we should note that if there are too many mistakes that occur, the repair system may be overwhelmed and not function effectively. There are several major DNA repair systems. These include uh, photoreactivation, excision repair, also referred to as a cut and patch repair, recombinant repair, mismatch repair, and the SOS repair. Let us do an overview. The DNA repair system can recognize mismatch base pairs, missing nucleotide, and altered nucleotide in the DNA sequence. For example, when timing dimers are formed after exposure to UV light, the photoactivation enzyme becomes activated and uh, enzymatically cleaves the timing dimer. Additionally, timing dimers can be removed by the rather complex process of uh, excision repair, where the disrupted uh, section of the DNA is removed. A cut is made on one side of the timing dimer that uh, bulges out from the rest of the duplex DNA. DNA polymerase 1 synthesizes a short replacement strand for the damaged DNA section. The old strand is then removed by the DNA polymerase 1 as it moves along the DNA and the newly formed DNA segment is ligated into place.
Recombination repair uses the correct strand of DNA to fill the strand where the error was deleted. Polymerase 1 and DNA ligase then fill in the other strand. When the large section of DNA has been lost, the double strands break can be handled by the recombination repair. Mismatch repair is activated when the base pairing is incorrect and a bulge occurs in the duplex DNA. Mismatch repair enzymes are able to remove the incorrect nucleotide and insert the correct one. Then we have methylin groups of adenine used by the mismatch enzyme system to determine which nucleotide is correct and which is a mistake. When DNA and cell damage occur, SOS repair is indicated. Damaged cells can be caused by UV radiation chemical, mutagen, and excessive heat. And by such treatments as exposure to cross-linking agents. There are certain sections of highly conserved DNA that are activated when the DNA is damaged. The genes that are a part of the SOS response system, they must work in a coordinated manner to repair the damaged DNA through recombination events that remove the damaged section and replace them with the correct sequence. Now, let us move into DNA mutations. Although many effective DNA proofreading and repair systems help to keep newly synthesized DNA from mutations, none of the systems are foolproof, and occasionally mutations occur. Once a mutation is introduced into the DNA coding strand, this information in the strand is now altered. It may be altered at uh, the protein level if the mutation encodes for a different amino acid or a change in reading frame. In general, a mutation is any change in the structure or sequence of the DNA, whether it is a physical or biochemical. An organism is referred to as a mutant if the DNA sequence is different from that of the parent organism. The original form of the DNA sequence and the organism in which it occur is called the wild type. We have a term called mutagens, which are the various uh, chemicals and conditions that cause mutation. We need to remember that many of these mutagens are also carcinogens, such as chemical benzene. There are different types of mutagens, and they may have a very different consequences for the organisms in which they occur. Mutations can also be spontaneous. If they occur in the germinal tissue, they are passed from one generation to a next. The simplest type of uh, mutation is the point mutation, in which only one nucleotide in the DNA sequence is changed. Point mutation includes substitution, insertion, or deletion. Let us examine the transition, which is a type of uh, mutation in which one purine is substituted for another purine, or one pyridine is substituted for another pyridine. When a purine is substituted for a pyrimidine, or a pyrimidine is uh, substituted for a purine, this is called a transversion. Another type of mutation that has a deleterious effect on the peptide sequence is called missense point mutation. A missense mutation results in a change in the codon, which alters the amino acid in the corresponding peptide. These changes cannot be accommodated by the peptide while still maintaining function. A typical example of a missense mutation includes the alteration in a hemoglobin molecule at the second base pair, resulting in a different type of inherited anemias. A very special type of a serious mutation called the nonsense mutation results when a point change in one of the nucleotides of a DNA sequence causes one of the three possible stop codons to be formed. Three stop codons are amber, UAG, opal, UGA, and 
Archie, UAA. And these terminate the reading of a DNA sequence, so the resulting peptide is truncated at its three prime end. More severe mutations occur when there is an insertion or deletion of one or more, but never multiplicities of threes nucleotide in the base DNA sequence. In transfusion medicine, it has been shown that. Uh, there is a single base pair deletion in the gene encoding for the transverse protein of the A blood group. The frame shift mutation results in a non-functional transverse protein that is seen phenotypically as the O blood group. Duplication, recombinant, and large deletion has a lower frequency rate than the mutation in the replication of the DNA. Duplication can occur quite frequently, which gives rise to pseudogenes and other so-called junk DNA that does not code for protein. There are two good examples of uh, duplication. The first includes the glycoprotein A and B genes. The second involves the gene RHD and RHCE, the Cheeto and Rogers blood group antigen carries on the complement component of the C4A and the C4B genes arose from duplication and mutation of the C4 genes. Between chromosomes such as the Philadelphia chromosomes present in chronic myelogenous leukemia with a reciprocal translocation of the gene material between chromosomes 9 and 22, mutation involved recombination or crossing overtake a place during the process of meiosis in the form of gametes to generate sex cells that are different from the parents. Crossing can be a single, double, or triple event. An example of such an event result in hybrid formation is seen in the MNS blood group system. Crossing events have formed the gene for the Bantu positive and the GP Hill phenotype. One of the most important events in the immune system is the recombination of DV and J genes which give rise to a vast array of immunoglobulin genes that are necessary for the antibodies of humoral immunity. Then we have deletion of large segments of DNA sequence covering hundreds on possibly even thousands of nucleotides. This is not capable of being corrected by the DNA repaired system due to the size and the complexity of the mutation. Such a mutation can result in complete loss of a peptide, a several bracket peptide or formation of non-functioning peptide. An example of this type of mutation in transfusion medicine is the Rogers negative phenotype which results from a a 30KD deletion of both the complete CD4 Roger and a 21 hydroxylase gene. Let us now move into DNA isolation. We know that uh, genomic DNA is present in all nucleated cells. The ability to successfully isolate DNA from the cell nucleotide of uh, cell blood culture, blood, uh, and other chemical specimen is fundamental to optimal performance of other molecular procedures. So in order for us to enjoy the study, we have to engage in an isolation process. Once the DNA or RNA has been isolated, they can be stored in a low salt buffer at the respective correct pH and negative 20 or lower for DNA and RNA at negative 80 for many months to many years. Tris ester buffer TE solubilizes DNA and RNA and protects against degradation. We have examined DNA. Let us now examine ribonucleic acid RNA, which is similar to DNA in structure but has certain key differences. It has a very different role to play in the cell. 
One of the key structural differences is that unlike DNA, which is usually a double-stranded helix, RNA occurs most often as a single stranded structure. Both DNA and RNA are comprised of nucleotides, but in place of thymine in the DNA, there is uracil in RNA. Uracil is very similar to thymine except that it lacks the methyl group. Another major difference is the substitution of the sugar ribose for deoxyribose in the backbone structure. RNA is the go-between for DNA, where the genetic information is stored to protein. The final product of the expression of the genetic information. Protein are the products of uh, transcription and translation. This flow of genetic information is from DNA to RNA to protein, and this is referred to as the central dogma. The first type of RNA molecule is ribosomal RNA, or R, lowercase r, capital RNA, which makes up a large part of the ribosomal structure of the endoplasmic reticulum in the cytoplasm. It is here that RNA is translated into peptide. RNA polymerase 1 transcribes rRNA. It is the most abundant and consistent form of RNA in the cell. The second type of RNA is the messenger RNA, uh, characterized by lowercase m, capital or uppercase RNA. The initial linkage between the information stored in the DNA and the translation of information into amino acid. It is uh, this form that is uh, transcribed from DNA that encodes specific genes such as those determination that varies blood groups. RNA polymerase 2 transcribes mRNA. Unlike rRNA, mRNA molecules are very different from each other depending on the gene from which they were transcribed. So that just gives us a, a little overview as to the RNA. So we have discussed two types. The first type is the rRNA. The second type is the mRNA. And now we're going to move into the third type. The third major type is a tRNA, which is a transfer RNA. It is involved in the delivery of the amino acid to the mRNA bounded on the ribosome. Each tRNA molecule can be charged with only one species of amino acid. However, as mentioned, the genetic code is redundant and many amino acids have more than one type of tRNA that actually codes for them. The fourth major type of RNA includes the small and microRNA molecules which have various functions within the cell. Some of these other functions include the regulation mechanism of cell development and defense. These RNA molecules, such as a silent RNA molecules, are necessary for proper gene expression and are altered in amounts and type during cellular growth and differentiation. We have a transcription which is uh, the cellular process by which one strand of uh, duplex DNA is copied into RNA. Then we have a translation in which uh, RNA transcripts and uh, turns into protein and a peptide, the functional molecule of the cell. So this information just serves as a brief overview as to the basic genetic concepts uh, that surrounds uh, DNA, RNA, and a few of the blood groups so that we can have uh, an understanding as to how the blood system operates. So this will be the basis on which uh, our subsequent uh, study will be developed. Thank you all for making it this far into our discourse. Uh, 
This is where we will put a pause on our study session as we seek to prepare our minds and review the concept so that we can have a more thorough understanding. In our next sitting, we'll be moving into the blood bank immunology so that we can understand a little bit about the antibody and its dynamics as it relates to blood banking. And then after that, we'll be diving right to full speed ahead into the whole mechanism of the antibody operation in actual blood banking where we'll be doing and considering DAT, IAT testing, ABO blood grouping, and the delights that come with the transfusion medicine, immunohematology, and blood banking. Thanks for spending some time with us on the Professor Kareem Ainsley Encounter. Please do enjoy and see you in the next sitting.